For me, cooking isn't just about the final dish that ends up on the dinner table. It's about enjoying the journey along the way. With each recipe step, I've found that spending time in the kitchen can provide a total sensory experience if you let it. Using ingredients that are just as fun to discover and prep as they are to eat, I'm sharing with you some of my most indulgent dishes, crafted to delight all five of your senses. As the sounds and smells of cooking fill your kitchen, I hope you start to feel the day's worries melt away. We're putting everything we have into each and every dish and getting back so much more in return. So let's not wait any longer. Time to get cooking. Whether you are cooking for a special occasion, making a romantic meal for two, or just treating yourself, these flavor-packed dishes will always have one thing in common, a splash or two of wine. On tonight's menu, I'm cooking a Cuban oxtail stew with a black bean risotto. What makes this dish so special is that the oxtails are slowly cooked in a luxurious petite Syrah wine sauce. A nod to Cuban flavors, this dish also puts a spin on the traditional rice and beans with a creamy and cheesy risotto packed with flavor. I already had my glass of wine poured, so let's get started. Building the flavor profile for the oxtail stew is very simple. We're just gonna chop up a few key ingredients. What's great about the Cuban oxtail stew is that it's just really organic. So you don't have to worry about trying to chop up everything and have it be the same size. It's all about the flavor. It's not about how it looks. I'm definitely a self-taught home chef. One of the tell signs is how long my nails are. Generally, chefs and restaurants keep them pretty short, but I like to get my nails did. So I've just learned how to chop successfully without cutting off my fingers. That was good. I need a little celebration drink for no crying. One thing about the garlic, you don't need to mince it, you don't need to chop it, you just need to release all your anger on it. So whenever you have a long day, hard day, something bad happened at work, just come cook a dish with garlic. So we have our chopped ingredients for our oxtail, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do a few chopped ingredients for our black bean puree. That's how my mother taught me how to do it. All your prep in the beginning so you don't have to worry about it later. So just a little bit of red onion. I once saw on Twitter that someone was talking about how, why is it that we didn't realize how great shallots were until we were in our 20s, mid 20s? It's definitely the case for me. I love them now. I usually substitute all types of dishes with shallots instead of a regular red or white onion. If ever you're feeling sad and you just need a good cry, cut up a shallot, a red onion, and a white onion and just sit underneath it for a while. It'll definitely get the tear ducts working. One last final thing that we want to do is grate our cheese for the risotto. You can't have risotto without grated cheese, and I think it's great if you use fresh cheese instead of cheese that's already prepackaged and grated for you. The flavor is just different. It's very noticeable. <laughs> Voila. Okay, the main event is here, our oxtails. So what we're gonna do is season these very simply, and then we're gonna sear them and brown them and then start to cook our veggies. So we do want to kind of over season a little bit just because there's a lot of liquid that's going to be added and tomatoes, which is very acidic. So you want to make sure that you balance that out with proper seasoning. We're just going to dust it with a little bit of flour and then we'll flip it and do that on the other side as well. This Cuban oxtail stew is completely different from how my parents cooked it or how my family cooked it. 
which I find pretty interesting how we are all connected through food. We all have these dishes that everyone just adores, but we all cook it differently. Still turns out great. All right, and now we can head to the stove. We're gonna take our oxtails. Of course, we're gonna take our wine. All right, soupies are ready to flip. That golden brown color, that's what we want. So we can take these out. Oh, smells so good already. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil. And then I'm gonna throw my veggies and my aromatics in here to start sauteing and sweat down. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here just to help the onion sweat some more. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my seasonings, my cumin, my bay leaf, my allspice, and my oregano. Some things just hit the pot instantly. Amazing smells come out. We're gonna add an ingredient that I think makes it very different from kind of like the Southern oxtails that I grew up on. It is a lot of tomato paste. Go ahead and throw that in here and we're gonna stir this up and let it kind of caramelize a little bit, which will bring out the flavor. All right, so we've got that stirred up and we're just gonna add these oxtails back in so they can be in their happy place, their safe space for now. And now the fun part, we're gonna add some stock. And then we are gonna add our wine. We're gonna let this come up to a boil. Put the top on it. And then we're gonna let it slow cook for about three and a half to four hours. So you remember our onions and our garlic that we chopped up? We're gonna add that into the Hot. Along with our black beans. <laughs> it's always a funny song to me. And then we're gonna add in our seasonings, which it's pretty typical, bay leaf, cumin, um, a little bit of dried tarragon and chicken bouillon cubes. That is what is gonna give it its flavor. And of course, we'll add in some salt and pepper. A little bit of water to cover. Got our salt. Got our pepper. And all we're gonna do now is allow this baby to cook down for the next hour, hour and a half. We don't wanna lose any of the liquid because then we're gonna puree it. So it's always a game of trying to find the bay leaf before blending it. And I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I just leave it in there and, you know, see who finds it, they get a prize. So I like to use my favorite kitchen tool, the immersion blender, to just puree this up into kind of like a paste of sorts. And the thickness is up to you. You can leave chunks of beans in there if you want to. I like mine to be really smooth to be able to mix it in better with the risotto. So I think this is good. Set this aside and now we'll start on our risotto. I hope you've been in the gym doing your arm work cause you don't need it girl. So we'll go ahead and coat this pan with oil. I'm just gonna let this warm up and we're gonna add in our shallots. Mm. 
Now we're gonna add in just a little bit of water and that's gonna keep the shallots from burning while they continue to cook. Let me tell you, risotto is a labor of love. So make sure that you're making this for somebody who actually deserves it. Everybody don't need to taste your risotto. All right, looks like most of the water is out. So what I'm gonna do now is add in my rice. Now we're gonna add some of our stock to this and we're gonna let this get absorbed. All right, it's absorbing, which is what we wanna see. Almost at a point where we can start adding our water in. I would say kind of add it in at three fourths increments. You just gotta be slow, you gotta have patience. <sighs> let the games begin. This is the part where I get bored. <laughs> 45 minutes at the stove. All right, it's pretty good. So what we're about to do is add in some butter. I hate to break it to you, but this is not a dish for the diet. Look at this. Such a luxurious, smooth, silky texture. That's what I love. Okay, so now we're gonna add in the cheese. And you see how it starts to thicken up. It really started to take on a texture of its own with the cheese. One more final taste. I'm telling you now, whoever you make this for is gonna love you forever. So I hope you're ready to deal with life with them because they're not leaving you after this. All right, now let's plate. All right, I cannot wait to dig in. It's just so bright and colorful. I can tell the flavor is there. The meat is so tender that it's falling off the bone. I cannot wait. A little bit of the sauce. Cause this is after all, a stew. And voila, there you have it. Black bean risotto with Cuban oxtail stew. Cheers. Mm. That's good. Remember in Miami, we stumbled upon like this little small Cuban restaurant. Right. And we went and we had the Cuban oxtail stew. And okay. it was so good that we had to go back right like back. two days later. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like my interpretation of that. Okay. Putting the twist with the risotto mix in there. But like still it. keeping like the traditional like black beans and rice situation. Like it. Yeah. It's savory. It's not too heavy, you know, mm -hmm. it's light. It's, it feels a little sophisticated. You got the risotto mixed in with the oxtail. I, right. I'm digging it. Toast. Cheers. Toast to tie. <laughs> As you guys can tell, this Cuban oxtail stew with black bean risotto recipe is very near and dear to my heart. I hope that it brings you full bellies and warm memories for the loved ones you make it for. To get this recipe, follow the link below. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.